Diversity. It's a beautiful thing, huh? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You want to talk about it? Oh, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. This is not going to be a friendly conversation you're going to get out of. You did the one thing. You did something so irrehensible. As a white guy, I have to speak up in this world. White people act out of line towards something I have no, you know, a part of. I have to speak up because if I don't, I'm part of the problem. So you know what? I'm going to speak on it, Rachel. Rachel, I'm with you. You are not wrong. It's black people's fault. Yeah. You know what? They had no business letting you believe that you know what the fuck you're talking about when it comes to basketball. See, that's what happens when you have Steven Jackson, Matt Barnes on your show that you get paid millions of dollars to say absolutely nothing on. That's what happens when you get people to gas you up. That's what happens. Someone has let this middle-aged white bitch believe for 20 years that she has some enlightening to bring to the game of basketball. When's the last time you heard a specific basketball breakdown from Rachel Nichols? Let me tell you, never. She's not even the best white woman NBA analyst at her own network. That would be Doris Burke for anyone that doesn't watch. You really think when there's a post up down low and they're doing some post slip screen, you really think Rachel Nichols knows what the fuck's going on? No, there's a reason why Doris Book is actually covering the damn game. Because she played. She knows what the hell she's seeing. See, but see, this is what happens when you let journalists be able to cover sports because they can tell a story. This is what happens when you let outsiders get in. They really believe that no matter what, they can bring a story to everything. They don't give a fuck about the process someone did from injury rehab to get back on the court. No, nah, you know what they care about? Hey, how did how did you get through your mom's cancer? They're like, I've never talked about the public. Yeah, well, I did some digging. And I want you to talk about your mom's cancer. Because you know what? That's what we want to see on TV. It's like the NBA draft. The NBA and the NFL draft... It's turned into this sob story. Everyone was homeless. Everyone was poor. Everyone had a dad that was in the picture. Everyone had a mom who was on heroin. Everyone had a mom who gave their kid to their grandmother because their mom couldn't watch the kid. Common theme. But no, this is what happens when you let journalists actually have say in sports. I'm not talking about women. Because like I said, Doris Burke knows what the hell she's talking about. But Rachel Nichols has her own daily TV show on ESPN. To say what? Oh, and she made a big deal about possibly someone taking her sideline duty. Oh, well, no, I don't want Maria Taylor to take my hosting duties. But guess what she did? She took your hosting duties, bitch. Oh. Oh, you think you were going to get that sideline? Nah. We're going to give it to this 26-year-old attractive lady who's actually well-spoken, who actually looks like she knows what the hell she's talking about, at least to some extent. Oh, like the world works. Younger and thinner and sexier. Hey, welcome to the workforce, bitch. Oh, please. We know you got your bubble cheeks and the bubble spread by Jimmy Butler. We know. And that's fine. You're allowed to have sex with who you want. That's fine. It's fine. And then you made a big fucking deal crying on camera because a younger, hotter, figuratively and literally reporter took your job who's actually been doing well for the past couple years when everyone has seen her actually go in detail about a story and not be so goddamn basic. 
She asked us questions that are insightful. And what was your questions? See, they still they still let this middle-aged redhead white bitch have the audacity. They still let her, you know what, just out of tenure for the company. Because we don't want to, you know, we understand that you've been a prize member of our employee force covering the NBA. You're a vital part of the team. The biggest event for the NBA of the year. We're still going to let you have a job. We're going to let you do the post game. We're going to let you do the post game questions. You know, the questions after a team loses, they go up on this podium and reporters just ask them how the game went because, you know, we need to waste 20 minutes for Chris Middleton to say, yeah, we lost. I didn't shoot well. Huh. And then we have Rachel Nichols. By the way, did I mention she gets paid millions of dollars to ask the following question? So, uh, I believe she asked someone on the Suns, and she said, so, Chris, um, how does it feel to lose the NBA Finals? And, of course, Chris Paul's like, not great, Rachel. Not great. This bitch, I'm sorry. I know that's not a proper term to use, but, hey. According to the audience, I think we're all on the same page. This bitch paid millions of dollars to ask first grade questions. If she were to write those questions in first grade interview class, you know what the teacher would say? Can you be a little bit more specific? You had three to four hours to figure out two questions you're going to ask. And that's what you come up with. Wow. We do see, yeah. We can definitely tell you hate diversity in all types. Questions, ethnicities, your job. The diversity of type of jobs you could do seems pretty singular. Diversity is definitely not in your vocabulary. But see, you know what? You know, I think I figured it out. You know who's to blame? Black people. This is what happens... When you let white women feel like they're part of the culture. This is what happens. They get a little too comfortable. They start saying some things that, mm, they get a little too comfortable. They forget all of history. They'll be like, hey. I love diversity. Diversity is what this company needs. Just not in my studio. Diversity is what this world needs. Black Lives Matter. I'm all for diversity. But can we just, uh, hey, can we, uh, can they get their promotion another time? I still got a few years on my contract. Huh. <laughs> Diversity. Hey, I care for diversity so much that the black woman, Maria Taylor, unfortunately, uh, she decided to leave the company once her contract was up because not only would they not pay her um, what maybe she was requesting. Now, that's negotiations. Maybe they just couldn't come to an agreement. But the fact of the matter is um, she didn't exactly... Fight for her to stay at ESPN either. This lady makes millions of dollars covering a predominantly black sport. But hey, I'm not into that much diversity. Well, if we're just going to go by the numbers, since a diversity hire is not really your thing. You cover a predominantly black sport, my man. You're the minority. If it wasn't for our diversity, you wouldn't have a job. Don't keep it real about it. We know these hires work. People think the hires are just by the company. No, 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 no. In case you don't know, 
The NBA and the NFL gets to dictate who covers the halftime show, which uh, individuals they want on the halftime show, the post-game show, you know. They actually get to choose that. They get to approve who covers their sport because they want to make sure whoever covers their sport speaks very highly of it and is very mindful of the brand. Oh, yeah, you didn't know that, did you? Well, uh, I'm glad to bring some diversity to your knowledge today. Since, you know, my white counterparts, you let her believe. This is what you get. White people. For white people, diversity is spicy mayo, all right? Big fan. Big fan. And I'm going to say Jimmy Butler put some spicy mayo in her uh, bubble Orlando cheeks. <laughs> oh, Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Gotta love them white bitches named Rachel, huh?